Hi, everyone. There's so much happening in the world today, and so many people that are praying and pressing into the heart of the Father to, to know how to pray and how to stand. And, you know, there, there are a lot of cues that we can take from the Bible. We see that Allenby, um, Allenby's group <clears throat> took some cues from uh, Jonathan uh, in the Bible, too, about how to win against the Turks. We see that the Bible gives us strategies. And right now, we are in a time that we need some good strategies, that we could run into that place with God. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm always told that we are to play from a, pray from a place of victory or the place of being seated in Christ. But you know, sometimes it's hard to know what that means. I picked up my, one of my favorite books, Reese Howe's Intercessor, and I want to read a few things or share a few things from there. And one thing that he says when they were combating Nazi, uh, the Nazis coming into um, uh, Europe and, and battling there, and, and by the way, they battled for three and a half years. And when those people in that school prayed, they prayed in the morning, sometimes at lunch, and then from seven to midnight, only taking a small time for dinner. And that was for three and a half years they pressed in. And the thing that he said, that was, he said many profound things, but one was, the only thing I'm afraid of is that I should miss God, God's will. So he was saying that when we fear the consequences over fearing God's will being done, we're, we're gonna, it's going to mess things up because we, it, it's going to shift it. We may not see those answers. And so how do we do that? That's plan, And people talk about praying from the victory or the seated place. So when I pray, no matter what the chaos is around me, no matter what the war is around me, they understood what war was air raids and Hitler flying over and all these things. But they had to understand that this wasn't a, um, this wasn't a battle for, um, for a political battle. This was a battle that was really about seeing God's will be done and the gospel being spread across the world. And so when they saw that God's will was being challenged by the enemy, they had to take a stand and they did it through prayer. And so at one point they made predictions, prophetic proclamations, and they were walking in what they understood. And when they didn't see it come to pass, Reese House said that was the greatest thing that happened to him, the death to the prediction, because then he was free to really hear from God and see why the delay was and what was happening. But they, they died to that. They, they thought, well, God, God did hear us, but we don't understand why the delay was. But they died to that and began to press forward. So sometimes we have to do that. We have to die to whatever predictions. But our victory is in Christ, and He wants this to be a victorious battle. I felt today that he was talking to me about um, Amy Coney Barrett, that, that um, I, I just saw her justice, and he said to call her Justice Barrett. So I call her Justice Barrett. And I thank God for her life. And I thank God for the angels that are with the justices even now. Because God is, I believe we need to continue to pray for them and to encourage them and build their faith as well. And this is not a battle. We're not in a battle in just our country in the United States. This is around the world. We're getting that from all over the world, that, that the, the freedoms are being challenged and trying to be stripped from our countries. But what we need to do is go to talk, really pray and ask the Lord to begin to move and shift the thing. We pray when he gives us a word of confidence, we have to hold on to that until we have the victory. The victory doesn't mean we see it change. And, and Reese Howell will tell you, the victory means that you're going to have that peace of knowing it doesn't matter how much chaos is going around, around you, and no matter how bad it looks, but you have the absolute peace that God has this and that there is going to be a shift and it's going to turn around. And that's the place of victory that we have to pray from. So, we're, so I want to encourage everybody to pray, not from a place of fear, oh my gosh, this circumstance is horrible, we don't want it. No, pray from the place of understanding what is God's will here. And His will is to see the Word be released throughout the world, to see His glory be released throughout the world. And this is not a battle between us and somebody else. It's a battle of the Holy Spirit. This battle is a battle of the Holy Spirit against the devil, against evil.
and it's it's wanting to consume and take people out take out their their um, their promises and their and the plans of God. The other day, Anna Parrott was talking about um, in our prayer time about writing down those promises because God has not forgotten those things. But we don't pray from that place of fear of, of, of we're not going to get them. And she didn't say that. She was saying pray from that place of knowing that you have them. And that's what God's saying for the world. This isn't just on a personal level. I want to encourage everybody in our school, everybody that CMM touches, that we would pray from that place. We would get that word of God and pray from that place of, um, of understanding that it's God's will that's going out and you matter. Everybody matters. Everybody's important on this wall. That they were praying around the clock and even when the bombs were going off and the raids and the people were dying, it doesn't matter. They held straight and they held tight to what God had shown them and they began to, they not only declared it, but they prayed through it in the spirit. They did everything they knew to do. Each one of you has a place on the wall. Each one of you has some place in some way that you pray, whether it's um, your intercession is worship. And by the way, we were talking about this last night. I believe Alan Guerin and um, Andre Blom brought it up about, um, about letting the worship and being seated, but letting the worship lead. So this is not a place that I go in and say, oh, dear God, help us. The circumstances are terrible. This is a place that I go in to begin to thank him, enter his courts with thanksgiving and, and his, uh, his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And so that's the place where I just worship him. I let Holy Spirit run the gamut and take me through that. And so this and we know those things really do. That's where we're supposed to be letting Judah uh, lead us. And from that place, I find my seated place, my place of victory. And what is that victory? Knowing that I'm praying not about the circumstance, but about God's will. Father, what is your heart? What is your heart over this? And begin to pray in the spirit over the heart of the Father to see these things being released until you personally get that victory. And what is that victory? Knowing knowing that you it's done even though you don't see it that's that place whether you're fasting whether you're um, praying in the spirit as you're worshiping that you are um, that you're travailing whatever it is you are going into that place and not from a place of fear <clears throat> And that's why the enemy wants to get us out into fear, that we see the things around us and we begin to um, try to curse those things or begin to do whatever. And it becomes almost like Christian wor witchcraft. That's the point that we need to understand. No, Lord, help us. And this is where, you know, let me just, I just want to pray. Lord, help us. Help us, Father. Help us, Holy Spirit, by your power that we would not enter into that agreement with fear, but we would begin to press in and not worry about the consequences as much as we're looking to your will, Father, that we would take our cues from the great men of old, how they won their battles, how they got their victories and begin to declare a thing and begin to walk in it. And even if we don't see it, that we still hold fast to it because that's who our God is. And he's not a man that he should lie. It's not a feeling. It's not, uh, you know, I have to see it immediately because that's not who our God is. And that's where we have to get into that, that place, that secret place. So I don't know um, if this is an encouragement to you or not, but um, my prayer is that it would be, and that you would also um, pick up this old book and uh, read this uh, and read the, especially the end of how he dealt with um, all the different battles and how they went at it and, and began to get the victory one thing at a time. And they saw the country change. They saw it shift. They saw it change. And they saw um, Hitler um, make some mistakes because they kept pressing in and holding on, even when it looked like there was no hope. Uh, you know, he even sent uh, a letters or he sent his book to Churchill because it was really tough at that time. And it looked like there was no hope. There was, I'm going to tell one more little story here. There was, it looks like there was no hope. And so um, the fighters, they ran out of everything. And uh, it actually says, um, we have nothing left. They had nothing, uh, five minutes. So they had nothing left. And so the, one of the premises of Reese House is that when we get to our end, that's when God helps and God steps in. So what happened was they, they ran out of resources and they were like, oh no, we're going to be defeated. And this was at, at, at one of the battles of Britain. And so what, what happened was uh, as soon as they ran out of resources, the battle stopped. It got quiet. Another five minutes, it says it passed by and nothing happened. And here the enemy went home. There was a shift that happened. But this was because there was prayer behind it. 
So, th so there, there are all these things that all the generations need to come together and just press in on, on behalf of all the wars and battles that we're seeing around the world. Anyway, I hope that's an encouragement to you. God bless you guys.